What's up guys, it's 2020. New year, new me. <laughs> Time to flip the switch and focus on a fresh decade ahead of us. I'm really looking forward to doing some new and interesting stuff this year. With that being said, it's time to talk about Black Ops 1 Ascension. Hoorah! <sighs> Ascension. Ascension released as part of the First Strike DLC pack for Black Ops 1 on February 1st, 2011. At the time, it was a pretty kick-ass map. It was bigger than any other map back then, and had a lot of cool new features like the space monkeys and the ability to travel on landers. In Ascension, we have these landers, and they'll take you from various points uh, around the map. And you know, everything about zombies, there's always something else, there's always some little secret to be found, so maybe these landers also do something else. <laughs> Ascension also offered a lot of noob-friendly spots for circle running. I mean, look at the PHG flopper lander area. Whatever designer mapped out that location, I don't know, give them a plaque or something. Because they accelerated the learning curve for the entire player base when it came to training zombies. The map also had a lot of drop-off areas, which made for very efficient navigation around the map. Along with a lot of elevated positions to utilize the dive-to-prone explosive flop. They're literally head Another aspect of the map that stands out is that it's in black and white until you turn on the power. And it's a bit surprising in retrospect that they ended up making that creative choice. I suppose the most obvious inspiration for it was The Wizard of Oz. And while I do appreciate the choice for Ascension, I don't know how much sense it actually makes. It seems like a very artsy choice for a mode like Zombies. Hey, check it out! Black and white, bitches! <laughs> Ascension may very well be my favorite Zombies map of all time. Over the years, it's become commonplace for many newer players, and even some popular content creators, to dismiss Ascension as being outdated and too easy. Well, I just reject your hypotheses. Or perhaps they dismiss it for not having too many story elements for their liking, especially when compared to more contemporary zombie levels, or experiences, as they've been marketed as in Black Ops 4. And that name is very fitting, because map releases nowadays are very short-lived experiences where you solve the easter egg, give your rapid reaction to the cutscene, maybe even get a decently high round, and then you say, Okay, uh, I've seen everything I need to see with this map. It was okay, uh, where's the next map? When it comes to my experience with Ascension, I remember it very clearly. Tuesday, February 1st, 2011, 5am. I downloaded the DLC that morning and played a quick game with my friend Mike from school. We only had the chance to play a few rounds before it was time to leave for class. But man, when we showed up to school that day, we were the big men, as everyone was jealous that we played the map before them. Now that I think about it, the time when Ascension came out was a somewhat interesting period in my life, because that was really when I first started to interact with people online. I was in the 8th freaking grade, and up until that point, I had only spoken to people who I knew in person, which I suppose is perfectly fine and was the norm for a long time, but it's weird to think about in retrospect. Like, before 2011, I had never left a YouTube comment, never chatted with strangers on a forum or chat room, and I never even played multiplayer games up until that point. In contrast, kids nowadays are talking shit on Twitch livestreams, uploading YouTube vlogs, and chatting with their friends on Discord, all at a very young age. I don't know why, but I think I've heard- I think I've played Ascension with you before. Um, uh, were you even born when Ascension came out? <laughs> Bruh, I'm kidding. Anyways, I think the point I'm trying to make is that during Ascension's release, I dove headfirst into the online scene, and since I was so impressionable at the time, I was fascinated by the first dedicated community that I stumbled upon, which was the Zombies community. It was a brave new world, and that period from February to August of 2011 specifically is one that I look back on with a lot of fondness. And it could have been any other online community that I happened to fall in love with. It just so happened to be Zombies, and that eventually led me to other sub-communities like DOA and Grief, and resulted in me making videos throughout the entire decade as well, and now making these flop retrospectives, where I look back on these older maps. So, uh, the moral of the story is that if you're young, stay the hell away from zombies and get into Fortnite, because that's where the money's at. I think Ascension was the single most influential Zombies map in terms of firmly establishing the high round community as we know it today. This is actually a point I mentioned in my first retrospective for Nocturne and Toten, and which I'll expand upon in this video. A playlist with all my zombie retrospectives will be in the description below. Anyways, before Ascension, there were certainly skilled players getting to high rounds and interacting with each other. But Ascension was when there was a more clear idea of who was getting to these high rounds and how exactly they were doing it. Ascension was the first map which had both a healthy player base number, while also having mostly legitimate leaderboards too. 
2, which allowed players to seek out teammates and sort of opened up a communication channel among high round players to learn more about the game from similarly skilled players. Early on in Ascension's history, the high round strategies were understandably very slow, as they usually consisted of having one guy at the flopper area with the thunder gun, and the other player at either the spawn room or maybe even the pack-a-punch area. And then the two players would converge and bring the zombies through the fire traps. Examples of teams who did this effectively included the duo of Arrow Riders and GFG, as well as Big Turv and Vulture Liz. But those bastards played slower than a turtle. In any case, the trap strategy was the most common and safe tactic for co-op at the time. But there were at least two other teams in the world utilizing a different, more efficient strategy. One team was the Cure for Zombies Boys, and the other team was Relaxin' and Christian R87. Both teams were quite advanced when it came to their strategy on the map, as they both had players on the flopper lander area, with one player running the horde and pulling the zombies, while the other player stuck back against the wall. They were also utilizing the Thunder Gun as an offensive weapon to quickly kill off hordes. Up until that point, the Thunder Gun was viewed primarily as a defensive weapon on co-op, something to protect you in case you were trapped. Funnily enough, both these teams safeguarded their strategy and didn't share with anybody else for a few months. In any case, some time had passed and the first round 99 game on Ascension was finally reached by Vulpecula 3C75 and Extra Crucial 420, although they probably used a sleep glitch in that game. Anyways, in early to mid-2012, everyone and their mother was suddenly getting around 99 on Ascension using the newfound spawn room strategy, with some people still using the dual flopper strategy as well. And obviously the strategy has evolved even more since then. In contrast, Solo was viewed as being a lot less skillful and important at the time. Mostly because it was just one guy at the flopper area with a lot less zombies and the ability to pause. But also a lot of dedicated players didn't really give Solo much attention, since there were no leaderboard entries for Solo matches on Black Ops 1. Early on, some popular YouTubers were able to get to high round since it was easy, along with more well-known high rounders like Relaxin' or Slayer Man posting records as well. A lot of these Solo players early on contributed to circle running becoming more mainstream through their videos. And I'm sure there's a few other names worth mentioning too, but this ain't a damn world record history video. Uh, but now that I think about it, maybe I gotta jump in on that market. The dedicated zombies community has grown quite a bit throughout the years, to the point where it has become increasingly difficult for the community to self-govern itself, which has been a long-standing issue dating back to the older days as well. Who decides what the rules are? What do you do when new issues related to the game emerge? What about certain in-game mechanics which are either too broken, too cheap, or even too difficult beyond reason? How do you deal with those issues? Well, you could put the power in the hands of the general public by running polls for certain issues. But wait a second. How do you know that these polls are not being tampered with? Who's distributing these polls, and how do you know the people voting are knowledgeable about the topic at hand? It's tricky business, and there's no right or wrong way to go about it. But the problem is amplified when the community grows bigger, and it becomes more difficult for people to oversee everything that's going on around them. So, let's relate this dilemma to Ascension and other maps in 2011. The issue? Using an out-of-bounds glitch spot to be invincible so that you could sleep on co-op when you got tired. A few highly respected players back then said, Hmm, no, I'm not going to use an exploit to get some sleep in my co-op game. Hopping in a glitch spot to sleep is inherently illegitimate. They would also argue that part of the challenge of co-op is playing without lengthy breaks. And for a while, that was a reasonable viewpoint. But as the skill level and knowledge of the player base increased, the matches became much longer. Instead of spending 20 hours for a world record run, you were now spending considerably longer time in a single match. At this point, some teams decided to use a sleep glitch, and precedent was set for a new generation of players. Anyways, this whole dilemma became a non-issue once players discovered that you don't actually need to get into a glitch spot to sleep. Instead, you could just rubber band your controller in front of a window barrier with the final zombie of the round, and you can't die if you have Juggernaug. Now you're using an in-game mechanic, in addition to it being a necessity given how long games were taken, and all is forgotten about sleeping on co-op. It's almost viewed as archaic that anyone ever thought that sleeping was associated with cheating. But there were a few legitimate teams who ended up failing a few rounds short of records back in the day because they wanted to maintain a certain integrity as they viewed it. While other teams nudged that aside, got records, concealed the fact that they used a sleep glitch since full proof wasn't a requirement back then, and the history of the game was slightly distorted as a result. But I suppose it do be like that. <laughs> As per usual, I'll end the video with fun facts, features, and other crap about the map that I think are worth mentioning. As alluded to earlier, Ascension marks the first appearance of a few things, including equipment like Gersh devices and Matruska dolls, along with perks like PSG Flopper and Stamina Up. 
and even the sickle melee weapon as well. With the exception of Noct, this was the only map on Black Ops 1 without double tap. Ascension marks the first time that a zombies map had a dedicated easter egg dev team and also a traditional easter egg quest as well. The little thumbnail image for Ascension on the map selection screen changed at some point a couple months after the release of the map for some odd reason, although the original thumbnail is still used for the map when playing on PC. There's an electric pole over by the MP5K. I'm scared that if I get too close to it, I might just- Ah, shit. Ascension marks the first time that you could get more than four perks on a map, thanks to the free perk bottle that you could get during the Space Monkey Rounds. The Monkey Round is also sort of nice, because it gives you a chance to rearrange your perks if you let them steal one of them and then buy a different one. Well, unless you're playing solo and those hairy jackasses take your quick revive. Ascension was remastered in May 2017 as part of the Zombies Chronicles DLC for Black Ops 3. There are some differences worth mentioning apart from gobble gums and general mechanics. For example, if you complete the easter egg quest, you'll be rewarded with all 8 perks on the map, as opposed to just getting a 90 second death machine like you do in the original map when completing the quest. Also, the Widow's Wine perk replaces PSG Flopper on the map. Additionally, they got rid of the black and white at the start of the game. Instead, there's some changes made to the saturation levels when the power is off. Personally, I think it would have looked better if they kept it black and white, but I guess that's a little too ill alienating for Gen Z. Gen Z for zombies. Ascension also appeared in the Black Ops Zombies mobile game from 2011, where there is color on the map when you spawn in. Aspects of Ascension's level design trace back to the campaign level Executive Order, and also the multiplayer map Launch. The AI behavior on this map is sort of unique, since the zombies do a lot of sidestepping and barrel rolling to throw you off and dodge your bullets. The map has a pretty cool poster, and it's always been a topic of discussion among fans because Rick Toffin is bold for some reason. That of course caused fans to speculate as to why he was bold, or if that's even supposed to be Richtofen. Some people say it's the character Gersh, and he was supposed to be a playable character, even though he's wearing the same outfit as Richtofen on the map. Uh, I don't know, but the poster tagline is very apt. Zombie players have no brains, no life, and no mercy. Is Richtofen the bold man in the first strike poster? No. So, that's Ascension. On another note, 2019 of course recently ended, and it was a year with a lot of new stuff for the channel, so be sure to catch up on all the epic MOZ content from this past year if you haven't already. There were a few episodes of this retrospective series released, uh, film reviews, a music video, a couple of montages that I edited, and even a bonus audio commentary track. Uh, in regard to 2020, uh, not much to say I guess other than in a few months there'll probably be teasers for the next Treyarch game, so that might be somewhat interesting at the very least, uh, maybe covering some of that. Uh, we'll see what happens. In any case, thanks for watching, and adios. Please, help me. She's coping. The mechanism must be repaired.